Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast and part 22 of our Dungeons and Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77, set in the capital city of Isordorex in the Second Dominion. The squad's attempt to battle the minor sea deity Emmet the Crab went awry, and now we join them, dead and or hospitalized, laid up in the Jericho headquarters, London. Bentley Widget is not available for a recap. I guess before we start, we'll have Ralph level up, if you can, please. All right. Oh. To... <laughs> signed into mine and it says dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, yeah, let, let's have you share the screen. Okay, uh, first click on manage hit points. Okay, and where it says rolled hit points, so roll an eight-sided die and add the number to that rolled hit points. Three. Okay, so make that a 65. Okay. Okay, hit apply. Okay. Okay, and then uh, change that level from 9 to a 10 with the little exclamation point. Yep. Yay, I'm a 10. Okay, and then scroll down on all these class features and see if there's any, you know, see what the newest one is, if there's any choices to make there. So at level... um, 10 it says beguiling defense i would at least read what that is so you know what you can do and uh, your patron teaches you how to turn the mind affecting magic of your enemies against them you are immune to being charmed when other creatures attempt to charm you you can use your reaction attempt to turn the charm back on that creature the creature must succeed in a wisdom saving throw against your warlock spell blah 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 dc blah, 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 blah one minute until the creature oh. takes any damage. wow that's cool. pretty cool yeah Okay, and, and then okay, scroll back up, and then okay. go to your click on the spells tab there. Yep, right there. Uh, click on add spells because there should be a. Uh, I think if you click on add spells, it'll tell you whether or not there's any more to do. Yeah, so cantrips. So you got looks like you've got three out of four. So you can learn one more cantrip. No. Where do I click that? See, it says cantrips three out of four, so you can learn one more cantrip. So cantrips are the spells that you can do all the time without wasting your spell slot. See, like oh. you've got Blade Ward, Booming Blade, Chill Touch, Create Bonfire, oh. Friends, Frostbite, Glean, uh, Green Flame Blade, Lightning Lure, Mage Hand, Magic Stone. You can learn one of those. Oh. See at the bottom it says cantrip underneath the yeah, little title. Yeah. yeah. So I think the pull down you can see what it actually does. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll do sword burst. Sword. Sword. Okay. Okay. I did the thing. All right. After the destruction of Midian. After the unraveling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions, the Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. Richard and Ralph, uh, you wake up in, in in hospital beds. You've been uh, coming in and out of consciousness for for f- several hours. Um, what you, you you have your your memory of what happened after you were you know knocked unconscious is a little fuzzy. Do you remember waking up a few times? Uh, one of the times, Ralph, you woke up and and uh, ran under the the massive creature, and you grabbed Musette's body and ran uh, and ran away with it, it, it to under the tree to kind of move her body to safety. 
you shot a couple of eldritch blasts at it and richard there was a, a you fired a couple of shots at the creature uh but the majority of the damage was done by those members of jericho uh the big guy with the gun flew up in the air and fired his gun at it and then billy church she cast some kind of blood magic that froze it in place and uh so that they they whittled it down to to and and killed it and for all the uh for all the crap uh ralph that you took uh for cutting open that monster uh when it was time to get the uh Chirnuvir's brother drovo out of the uh, creature you were the only one that could do it so everybody else failed their survival checks and only only Ralph was able to uh, to carve Drovo's body out of the uh, out of the creature, uh, but Drovo was Drovo is was definitely dead uh, when you brought him out, and so the bodies uh, the the bodies of your friends are in the next room over. Uh, a spell has been cast on them to keep them from rotting, and to make them able to be resurrected more easily. Billy Church comes into the room and and says, "I'm glad you're awake again." Um, we've got some things to talk about, and this is to uh, to Richard and and um, Ralph. Okay, you have a difficult choice ahead of you, and she she's holding an urn in her hands. You have to meet Father Paul Rawlings. You and he are going to uh, choose one person to resurrect for today. Father Rawlings is a ghost. And he's going to possess one of you to make this work. Uh, so first, are you willing to be possessed? And second, who are you going to choose amongst these people to resurrect? I don't Zoe. Know. Zoe. Okay. But can Zoe? Zoe can make us all heal, right? I think so. That's. I so. I can resurrect and I can heal. Who said that? Ooh, I'm a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ghost. so um, she she opens up the the lid of the urn and she says, "Take out one of the ashes from this, and you have to swallow it." Oh, that's nothing. New. Yeah. <laughs> now. Uh, okay. Uh, make a make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, fifteen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you feel um, you feel the presence of a of a spirit um, inside of you, but he's not completely taking over. He says, "Okay, I understand we're here to resurrect somebody. It seems like that's the only time I ever get called to do this sort of thing. What are we gonna do?" One of uh, our teammates needs help coming back. They're in the next room over. She's the one with uh, the fire hair. Okay. Lead on. Just... Okay. I'll let you walk. Am I attached to anything other than a What's hospital it? bed? Uh, no, no. You can. You can. You. You feel a little woozy, but you're good to to get up and walk around. Cold floor. All right, um, but she's over here somewhere. So okay. maybe, uh, maybe. Uh... Yeah, and so as you you go out the door and you walk in uh, to the next room, you see you see basically seven seven other hospital beds, but this is the room of of, of the dead with the dead bodies. So you see Cherubir, you see Zoe, you see Bentley, uh, you see Musette. Uh, you see um, Drovo uh, all laid out on these slabs. Uh, Tressa Young is uh, performing some rites over Zoe's body. Does it only have to be one person? All my friends are dead. Uh, we can only do one at a time and only one per day. Oh, okay. Let's do this. So, Zoe... You find yourself traveling through darkness at first. Walking, you seem to be carrying some forward momentum. The darkness changes, and uh, it, what was darkness turns into kind of a grassy um, plain. 
Uh, you're walking along at first a river, uh, and then and then the river changes, and then the, then there's a uh, fiery lake uh, beside you. Uh, you feel to a spell of protection. Spell of protection is to to guide you through the land of the dead, um, and the spell gives you the choice. If you get attacked by the, these denizens of the land of the dead, you can either um, you can either have advantage on on all of your attacks and all of your saving throws and checks, and the enemy has disadvantage, or you can have uh, shadow shadow versions of all your friends join you. They're not real. They you know they're yeah. not really your friends, but they would but they would be there to help you. Well, if I know that they're not real, then it's not going to be that much of a comfort. So maybe I should just take the, you know, choose the, uh, the attack the, thing. Yeah, the the, the main difference case. the main difference with them is that uh, they're 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 kind of like you remember them. Uh, they can't be healed, so when they yeah. get hurt, when they get hurt, they're you know they're they just get whittled down to nothing, and then they're gone. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna take the attack thing. The advantage. Yeah. Okay. There, there are there are some uh, pretty hefty things in the land of the dead. So. All right. Man, yeah, this map is so huge. Okay. There's Zoe right there. All right, yeah, I found me. All right. Okay. What am I doing? <laughs> okay, roll initiative. Roll initiative. Oh, and first of all, do a long rest because you're not, um, for this purpose, you're not dead. Your soul's not dead. Okay. Roll initiative. Here we go. Get back on there. Initiative. Where are you? Oh God. Critical fail. <laughs> Plus two is a three. Okay. <laughs> All right then. I'm definitely dead. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah, this map is so huge. It's I put it in a in I when I made it, I made it in super high resolution and it ended up being twice the size that I meant it to be. But we'll just say it's like you're in the 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 Gulliver's Travels. <laughs> this guy is going he can go 20 feet. This guy can go 30 feet. Okay, so I don't see any either one of these guys because I'm really far off from them, aren't I? Yeah, if you look at my screen uh, that I'm sharing. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of flipping back between mine and yours so I can see it on mine. Okay. okay. How did the token settings get up there? I don't want that. Okay. There. Okay. Yeah, since you're last on initiative. Okay, and then... Okay. All right. Uh, now it's your turn. My turn to move, you mean? Yeah. Okay. All righty. Let me get back on my screen here. All right. Um, I'm I'm heading toward them. Is, is that correct? Is that yeah? Yeah. The that's that's the direction. That's the direction you okay. need to go. Okay. So. Oh God, let me find me again. 
scrolled out. God, where am I? <laughs> okay, there I am. All right, so. There's a fire snake in front of you. All right, I'm just going to move because. Do I even see him? Yeah. Yeah, you okay. can see him. He's kind of glowing. going to do a second level guiding bolt. Okay. Roll to hit with advantage. Oh god, I got another critical fail. 1 plus well, you 11 get to is roll, 12. You get to roll twice and take the okay. highest number. Yeah. Okay, so 1 plus 11 is 12, or 15 plus 11 is 26. I would, yeah, so 26 to hit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And... That hits. All right. Uh, 19 for damage. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you did some massive damage to that fire snake. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Yeah. <laughs> you hear a, a sort of a booming voice uh, say, Oh, Rarex snake, take yourself off. For Geb, protect me. Get up. For you have eaten a mouse, which Ra detests, and you have chewed the bones of putrid of a putrid cat. It sounds like uh, Tressa Young's voice when you hear it. Now, whoa, where are we? There we go. There we go. Actually, he's going to dash. And he's going to face you. Okay. He, he uh, also dashed, so he can't do an action. He can just, he's just going, using his action to move. And same for the swarm of poisonous snakes. Okay. All right. The that's a lot of snakes. Yeah, now it's Zoe's turn again. Okay, I think I am going to... I think I'm going to do that guiding bolt one more time against the fire snake. Okay. He's hurt really badly. You can see uh, up close it's not going to take much. Okay, I got a 16 on that to hit. Yeah, you still roll twice and take okay. the highest number. That would hit, by the way, but just in case. Okay. Okay, I got 19. Hits. Yep. Okay. You hit him. Roll your okay. damage. 13. He's dead. Yay! <laughs> Didn't get to see what Fire Snake does for damage. I'm not worried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything you want to do with bonus actions or anything or movement? Uh, well, I'm probably going to need to get closer to that ball of snakes, even though I don't want to. Okay. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to stay just outside of hopefully reach okay <laughs> all right never smile at a crocodile yeah. mm -hmm. 
but, but that was with dashing, so it can't attack or anything. <laughs> okay, it's your turn again. Okay, what I am going to do is a uh, second level spiritual weapon. Okay. What does it look like? Uh, as usual, an onk. Okay. My 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 onk dagger. Oh, that's a lot better. Twenty-five. Oh, okay. And then for damage, ten. Okay. Twenty-five definitely hits. You just needed a fourteen. Although, yeah, you did you roll twice, just in case you got a critical hit. Uh, no, but I can. How, well, yeah, and and does it tell you if you got a natural twenty? No, I mean it just comes up when you know when the thing comes up, but it's still the the second roll is only twenty two, so twenty five is fine. <laughs> yeah, is it twenty five? Is that twenty plus five, or is that like nineteen or eighteen or something, plus something? I mean, it was how plus do you 11. know? It was plus eleven. So oh, it's plus eleven. Oh, so it's not a critical yeah. hit. Okay, no. and no, ten no, no. damage. Correct. Okay, got it. Just want to make sure if we get a critical hit, you do double damage. So I want to make sure we get that. Okay. Yep, you hurt. You hurt that uh, snaky. That that uh, pile of poisonous snakes. <sighs> Okay, uh, anything else for your turn? Oh, and Rob, can you put the onk um, on there or the, the spiritual weapon? And where where do you want it to sit? Is it behind it or like in front of, between you it, and, be and Between it? me, between me and it. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm done. Now it is the swarm of poisonous snakes' turn. Okay, they're kind of going around the weapon. And they are going to bite at you. With disadvantage. Oh, jeez. I rolled badly on both. I got a five and a four. Good! So a four uh, plus six is nine to hit. So I think they missed. Yeah, my armor okay. class is 17. Yeah. Your turn again. Alrighty. I am going to do uh, just a first level guiding bolt. Uh, it, it Ranged attacks at... at Point blank range or a disadvantage. Oh, okay. But since um, you have advantage, it would be just a straight roll. Yeah, there you go. That's where it would be. Okay, so do I just go ahead and hit cast like I normally do then? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, so. Oh, yeah, 18 plus 11 is 29. Wow. Jeez. Okay. That's All right. Yeah, that definitely so hits. my. What's the damage? My damage is eight. Okay. Yeah, so that guiding bolt slams into those snakes and burns up a bunch more of them. Yay. Tastes like chicken. Yeah. I've never eaten snake. I've had alligator. Okay, anything else you're going to do with your uh, bonus actions or movement? Well, I've already got my my uh, weapon up, so okay. there's really not a whole lot I can Oh, yeah, your spiritual weapon, then your yeah. bonus action is making that thing do its turn. Yeah. So go ahead. 21? Yep, and roll twice. That would hit, but still. 29. <laughs> is 29 it? A... No, it's plus 11, right? No, no, yeah, it's 18 plus 11. Okay. So 29, that definitely hits. Yeah, yeah. Roll your damage. my damage. Oh, that's crummy. It's just six. Okay. But still, every, I'll take it. Every, yeah, every little bit helps. That's right. Yeah. Okay. 
Yep. So you the, it uh, it decapitated a couple of more snakes. It's not and... like a hydra, is it? <laughs> no, it's just it's really just a big pile of snakes. Good. Okay. And the snake's going to take another bite at you. Oh, that's a miss with a three. Yes. Plus six is nine. Okay. And Zoe's turn. Alrighty. Let me see. I am going to do third level spirit guardians. Okay. And so that gives me, they flit around me to a distance of 15 <clears throat> feet. So it seems like that's yeah. going to come between me and those lizardy thingies. Crocodile. Yeah. Whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's a 15 foot radius around you. All right. What is your uh, save, wisdom save DC? 16. Wow. And they have to make it a disadvantage. And I bet a swarm of snakes doesn't have a high wisdom. Probably not. Okay. Yeah, they failed. Yay. Okay. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, yeah. Now, it, Did, it says on here, on a failed save, the creature takes 3d8 radiant damage. Yeah, and it was 10. And did, did okay. your um, did your bonus action, did you already do your spiritual weapon? Yeah, I think you did. Well, okay. that that stays up until I cast it again. No, I, I mean, did you make, did it, did you do your bonus action to make it attack? No. Okay. All right, so roll the hit. Yay. And there's only a couple of snakes left. Wow. All right, I got a 28, so that definitely hits. Is that? Okay, yeah, and that's not a natural 20. And yeah. I got a 9 for damage. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you you killed the last couple of snakes, and so all the, the, the bundle of poisonous snakes is dead. Yay. Good news. Yeah. Because the crocodile runs into your thing to go after you and it takes 10 damage and it is going to bite at you uh, with a 12 to hit so it misses Yay! and it's hurt pretty bad already <laughs> okay I'm just going to use my spear <laughs> okay I forgot that you had a spear I do I have a yeah. spear He's, he's right there, so I'm just going to stab him. Okay. Uh, roll to hit. 13. Uh, and roll twice and take the higher number. Ah! Oh, natural 20! Plus okay, 7 is 27. Yeah, you'd... Okay, so roll your damage and double it. All right, so that'd be 20. Oh, my God. Okay. It's, it's, it came up 10, so 20. Yeah, okay. Describe what you do to uh, to kill this alligator with, or this crocodile with your spear. Oh, right between the eyes, babe. Okay, <laughs> you stab him <laughs> right between the eyes, and it it's uh its eyes look opposite directions when you bleh, stab him right through the in between. There we go. That's that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> and um, there aren't any more creatures that you know of. Uh, you can move your way towards the end of the map there. So I'm continuing to go right. Yeah. Four, five. Okay. So I'm. Am I just still doing thirty feet at a time, or because that's all I did? Or should I? Just yeah. You. I. There aren't. As far as you know, there aren't anymore. You. You're out of combat, so you can just go. Okay. All right. I'm. I'm Am I supposed to follow the path? Am I, is that what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do, 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 do. Just walking along, singing a song. Okay. You come to a cat-headed demon. 
Oh dear. Is this one that I know? No, he's not. Okay. Uh, he looks similar, but is not is not the same. Uh, not the same as the as the one you know. Okay. And he says, he says, uh, Zoe Anastasia. Hail to thee, guardian. To, to pass through these gates, you must answer my questions. Very well. Have you looked after your body as best you could? Yes, I have. Hast thou lived to the fullest of the time allotted to thee? Yes, I have. Hast thou found out information that was not meant for your ears and eyes? No, I have not. Has, have you stolen? No. Have you killed? Yes. Hast thou spoken unjustly in anger? No, I have not. Have you been jealous? Do waffles count? Because <laughs> I, I don't understand that answer. Can you rephrase that? The bird had one more waffle than me one day. So, technically, yes. Okay. <laughs> Hast thou spoken ill of any man or woman in anger? No, I have not. Hast thou been undiligent in work? No, I have not. Hast thou profaned the mysteries? No, I have not. Hast thou known pride in thyself that is false? No, I have not. Hast thou strayed from the path allotted to thee? No, I have not. Hast thou been too worldly? No, I have not. Hast thou been just in thy dealings in the marketplace? I have had no dealings in the marketplace, so I will say I have been just. Hast thou replayed all debts promptly? Yes, I have. Hast thou been generous to the needy? Yes, I have. Hast thou lied to gain from others? No, I have not. Hast thou been a friend? Yes, I have. Until my death. Hast thou hated another to the exclusion of all else? No, I have not. Hast thou uh, been thy parents' joy? That is not for me to decide. Hast thou honored all faiths that are in of the light? Yes, I have. Hast thou given time to be at peace with the gods? Yes, I have. Hast thou turned aside from wisdom given in love? No, I have not. Hast thou lived in the light? Yes, I have. Hast thou been a sword for the weak? Yes, I have. Hast thou enslaved any other life? No, I have not. Hast thou faced the mirror of self? Yes, I have. Hast thou known that all journeys end but to begin? Yes, I have. Hast thou remembered that the brethren of the earth and been compassionate to those younger brethren who serve thee as beasts in the field and home? Yes, I have. And the snakes and crocodiles don't count. Well, they're not on the earth. <laughs> <laughs> is there one upon the earth who is glad thou hast lived? That is not for me to decide. You have to name someone. Well, let's see. I would say hopefully Ralph, since I was his partner. Okay, uh, make a persuasion check. Okay. Persuasion. 16? He, he opens the gate for you, and you are yes. able to go in to the Hall of Judgment. 
So the judgment hall oh. uh, opens up, and inside you see a, a, a massive scale, and you see uh, Anubis with his jackal head. You see uh, your mother, um, or your it's your mother or ancestor, I forget. Aset is my mother. Ma'at yeah. would be the one that, that weighs the heart. Yeah, yeah. You see Ma'at and you see uh, Aset. I just couldn't remember if Aset was your ancestor or your mother. Uh, reincarnated mother, because I yeah. reincarnate. <laughs> so both, I guess? Uh, is okay. it, yeah. We yeah, are not and in this world. <laughs> yeah, and you see... Um, uh, yeah. And uh, and you see Amit, the eater of the dead. Um, and and um, Anubis is is gesturing you forward to uh, to come to the scale. Okay, I'm coming up to the scale. Yeah. Okay, and at this point, um, Aset says, "Wait, stop! I think, I think her friends are trying to bring her back." Uh, I, I'm going to ease the passage, if this is the case. And what we have to understand here is that Anastasia is instrumental in stopping the usurper god. We're barely hanging on by a thread as it is. This one god to replace all gods is, is a, a massive threat. And she has already uh, helped uh, to destroy two of his three aspects. So... It's in our best interest to help ease her passage back to the mortal world to, to do what she needs to do to finish. Back to Ralph. Uh, the, so for the resurrection, there's a roll to make this resurrection happen. Uh, you're going to be rolling with advantage because of Zoe's, all the, Zoe's hard work in the afterlife. Uh, but the, the DC is 20. Um, but you're but you have a plus 12 on there and and Richard you can also help uh, so you can help by either however however way you want to do it you can try to uh, you can do pers whichever skill you have the best in that you think would help medicine or persuasion if you want to try to persuade Zoe to come back we got or, a plus um, six in persuasion okay yeah so what what would you say to Zoe to, to convince her to come back me or uh... no um richard uh, richard no i would say zoe please come back i know that you really really helped us out you know a lot with that fight against emmett and and you know helping me not die there at the end i, I really value you as a part of our team and we're all just getting to know each other i really i need some old bay spice in my life please come back Okay, uh, make a persuasion check. <laughs> what, what number uh, is that? Seven. I, That's a I plus six. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no. Okay, so yeah, that didn't help. Hold maybe on. The, maybe the old base spice was too a little too jokey for the afterlife. A little too much. No. It's better. Over here, like, who? Yeah. Like, what? Okay, so Ralph, uh, go ahead and roll for the uh, resurrection. Rolling for resurrection. Hold on, let me. Yeah, so you're rolling a twenty-sided die, and you have plus twelve. Roll to seventeen plus twelve. That's uh, a seven twenty twenty-nine. Yep, you uh, you managed. Um, so so Aunt Zoe or Anastasia, uh, you wake up. And you see, you see Ralph standing over you and Richard, um, on a hey. slab. You were dead, but now you're alive. Am I? Am I going to be retaining all of my memories, or am, or, or am I just alive make, again? Uh, make a wisdom saving throw. If you get above a ten, then you get to keep your memories. I got an eleven. Oh yeah, you remember everything. Yay! Welcome back. Thank you. How was it? What'd you have to do? 
What was it like just being dead? Oh, I went home. Why are you calling me Zoe, though? My name's Anastasia now. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, mom, mom changed my name. Apparently, when I get resurrected, I have my middle name now, so it's Anastasia. When did that happen? Just now, I think. Okay. Just now. <laughs> okay. But, you know, there's no concept of time over there, so it, uh, I don't know. You go up a level now, so you can go hey. ahead and you can go ahead and do that. Okay. And if you want to share your screen, you can if it will help. Okay, go to level ten. Confirm. Or Anastasia. <laughs> you can change your name. You can on there. you can call me either, but yeah, you know, since Anastasia means not dying, <laughs> mm. <laughs> forever perpetual. Okay, so hey, yeah, click on manage hit points. All right. All right. And then roll an eight-sided die and add that number to rolled hit points. If you get a one or a two, you can re-roll it. All right. Eight-sided. Got a seven. Okay, so make that a fifty. <laughs> and hit apply. All right. Okay, and you already changed the level to ten. It looks like. Correct. Yes. Okay, and then it looks like you have divine intervention. Woohoo! You can read what that means. Uh, I can call on my deity to intervene on my behalf when my need is great. What does that mean? <laughs> I go on at five today now. My so. need's always great. I'm a very needy yeah, person. Yeah, it, it's actually really, really hard to pull off. Hmm. Okay. Um, but basically, your god comes down and helps you out if you you know when you do it when you'll see it on your character sheet the spell but it's like i think you have to roll on a 20-sided die you have to roll um your level or lower on the 20-sided die so you'd have to roll like a one through ten or something like that or on a hundred sided die i forget i think it's on a hundred sided looks die, like a hundo right? yeah percentile dice yeah okay. so it's 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 hard to pull off <clears throat> okay but if you do it, a set would come and help you out. Okay. All right. Yeah. So then you can't call on her again for a week. Ugh. Yeah. Well, she is a busy lady, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if she fails, you can try again after a yeah. long rest. Okay, so scroll back up to the top and, and look at spells to see if there's any new spell stuff to do. Okay. So scroll down to the bottom and click on uh, known spells. Four of five, so I can add a cantrip. Okay. All right. How about uh? Ooh, what's this one? That makes like little noises and stuff. Yeah. It's word of radiance. Oh yeah, word of radiance. That sounds good. I think I'm going to do Word of Radiance. Okay. Okay, so we're good. All right. Was that All it? Right. Just cantrips? I didn't get to see. Uh, oh, it was four. And, it was four and, five. And you I get have. one more prepared spell. Ooh, one more prepared. Spell. So I always start at the bottom and take the highest level spell I can when that happens. Okay. So you can do a fifth level spell if you want. Do you have raised dead already? Uh, I've oh. got that that. Um, Staff that can raise the dead, but I can only use it once, and then it really. If you me. yeah, it, go to known spells. I think if you click on known <laughs> spells. Known stick. Yeah, then you can see what you know and what you don't know, and scroll down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh, raise dead says always prepared. That's yeah. probably because of the. Yeah. Um. Lot of that. Oh, people um, getting turned to stone or cursed? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to go with. I can always use an attack spell because I'm not really an attacky person. So hmm. when I when I need it, I should have it. So I'm going to go with flame strike. 
Flame Strike is really good. All right, we'll do that one. Okay. Uh, all right, so you're up. Do you want to uh, resurrect somebody now? Yes, I do. All right. Um, let's see. <laughs> I love how yours says wasted. <laughs> Okay. Um, so yeah, you've got you've got Chirdovir, you've got Musette, uh, you've got um, Bentley, and uh, Drovo. Okay, there's three of us here, so I think we should all jointly decide. It shouldn't just be up to me. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, get Musette. Yeah. You? But only you can do it, I think, Zoe, because I got you out, and you have to eat the ash. Which... I think she can just resurrect people. On I her can own. just resurrect. I don't have to eat the ash. Oh, well, if you can do that, then just get all three of them. Go for it. Uh, I think I can only do one at a time. One a day. Spell. Yeah, one per day. So we um, can get two per day. Oh. Well, if we do the long round. Okay, because with my Rod of Resurrection seventh level, I touch a dead creature that's been dead for no more than a century, which implies. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And for our purposes, the Rod of Resurrection is really sort of a conduit for Zoe's power. So you can't pass it off to somebody and have somebody right. else use it. Yeah. All right. I know you guys so. talked about doing that last time, but it really wouldn't have worked. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to use my Rod of Resurrection on Musette. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, okay. So, Musette, uh, you are, you find yourself um, back in the Orchard of Lemuel Lowe. Uh, it's empty. Uh, you look around and you don't see any people there. And it feels really uncomfortable. The, the thing that has sort of made you feel uncomfortable about the fugue and uncomfortable about this place, the thing that makes you always want to leave and want to be out in the real world is that it doesn't feel like a real place. It felt like living in a museum or, or, or living in, a, um, in an obituary. You know, it's like... You want people to just live and be free and not not be not be a party to this um, sort of hiding away and and uh, and waiting to die. Is somebody humming? Who's doing that? Joe oh, Sorry, it was me. I'm muting myself. <laughs> you, you could just not hum. He was providing okay. us background music. Oh. From the dead. Thought... It's it's just air escaping my body. I'm just a corpse on the floor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sound like an Alice in Chains song. Isn't that supposed to be a fart though? You you sort of look around and you see zombies and skeletons start popping up out of the ground. And you're on the stage at the in the center. Oh. Oh, there it is. Uh, roll for initiative. Initiative. Okay, I got 18 total. All right, so skeletons are going first. So this one is going to shoot at you with his bow. And he got a 19 to hit. Ah, that uh, hits. Yeah. So that's uh, uh, eight damage from from skeleton A. Okay. Eight damage. And skeleton B. Got a natural one, so he dropped his bow on the ground. Skeleton C got uh, 20 to hit. So he's shooting at, shooting you with his bow uh, for four damage. Four damage. Yeah. Copy that. And skeleton D is uh, 16. Does that hit? No, uh, my armor class is 17. Okay, and the last one missed. Okay, now it's Musette's turn. Cool. I'm going to do a wind wall. Okay. Um, Right across there, that section of, I don't know what those are, the wood planks or whatever those are. Um, They're like seating benches for... Um, oh, okay. Yeah, a wind audience. wall just at facing facing the uh, zombies and skeletons. Okay. And uh, 
um, just in front of, yeah, A and B. Okay. Um, so in between you and the audience? Yeah. Okay. And it says I can make it up to 50 feet long. I don't know if I can make yeah. a whole block around them or if I can make a U shape around them. That's yeah, you a can, you can, you can shape it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be straight. I, I only have 50 feet. So if we can make some sort of U shape around yeah. the, uh, yeah, around them. Yes, wherever the cursor is. I see the cursor moving. Yeah, so um, each one of these squares is five feet, so it won't be super big, right? Mm -hmm. um, so while he's doing that, it says, um, do, do, okay, I know that. Okay, when the wall appears, each creature within its area must make the strength, strength saving throw. A creature takes three D8 bludgeoning damage on a failed save or half on a successful one. Oh, so you're putting it like right across them, A and B? So 50 feet wall, 15 feet high, and one foot thick. And one foot thick. So I think, yeah, I think it has to go through them to hurt them. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, then can I do the U-shape instead uh, through, mm -hmm. yeah, just through zombie B, skeleton A, skeleton B, zombie A, skeleton C. Yeah. So now it'll just go in a little line. That's yeah. too far. Like a snake. Is too it, much? That's, yeah, that's longer than 50 feet, probably. 50 feet okay. you will only hit B and A if you go that long distance. Mm. Okay, let's do skeleton B, zombie A, skeleton C then. That should be 50 feet within the 50 feet. I think feet. you could hit A, C, uh, skeleton A, skeleton C, zombie A, and skeleton B, right? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 35, 40, 45, 50. Oh, okay. Yes, then. Let's do it that way. Skeleton A, skeleton C, zombie A, skeleton B. Okay. And it's gonna be is, a weird this, is this spell from your liar or is that from... Um, it's, or is yeah, that it's one from of my liar. Okay. Does it not work in this space, my liar? No, it, yeah, it works. I was just curious. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I hadn't thought to, to ask. That was a good point. <laughs> Um, and then it there says, uh, okay, so they have to, the, the creature within the area must take a strength saving throw and it takes 3d8 bludgeoning damage on a failed save or half okay. on a successful. And w what's the saving throw, um, the, it's strength, but what's the number yeah. on the wire? It's uh, 15. 15. They got to beat a 15. Seven. Okay. So skeleton A takes the full seven damage. And skeleton C takes the full damage, and zombie A. Well, he he uh, takes half, so I guess that's uh, three. Nope. Sorry. Okay, I don't have anything. Okay, sorry, I'm done. Okay, so uh -huh. zombie A is going to move out of the wind wall, and he can go twenty feet. 5, 10, 15, 20, and then he's going to use his action to try to climb over the top of the stage. He'll make a... He'll make an athletics check. Oh, natural 20. He was able to climb over the stage. There. I can't... Well, Rob, I can't get him in the stage. Be going from the left side. Okay, there That's we okay. go. Got it. Okay, that's Zombie A's turn. Okay, B. Was that zombie walking into the wall for a few seconds? Just banging what? his head? Was, was that zombie just banging his head against the wall until he realized there were steps? No. Okay. Okay. And then this one has no legs, so it only moves at half speed. <laughs> okay. And then the skeletons. So 
So skeleton A is going to move out of the wind wall and shoot another arrow at you. That misses. Skeleton C is going to move out of the wind wall and fire an arrow. And 19, I think that hits. Yeah, 19 hits. So he, you take four damage for you get an arrow sticks into you. Oof. Skeleton B moves out of the wind wall and fires an arrow. He misses. Sorry, Skeleton the one that hit, did you tell me the damage? Oh, four. Okay. Yeah. Four. Copy that. Okay, this one goes this way and fires an arrow. He misses. And this one tries to shoot through the wind wall and he can't because it doesn't work. So just nothing happens. Okay. Did zombie C go? Zombie C? Oh, no, he didn't. I forgot about zombie C. There we go. Okay, go ahead and use it. Okay, so wind wall, I can drop that. Okay, so I guess I'll just do another wind wall through zombie B, skeleton A, skeleton C. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. six oh, there's seven, another another eight, wind wall? Oh, yeah, the, okay. that's all I can get, I think. Okay. Zombie B, skeleton A, skeleton C. I think you could get B, C, A, and C. Yeah. Yeah, like a zigzag. Uh huh. Rob, if he went, if it went from B to down to C, and then up to A, and then down to skeleton C. Oh, there's enough space for that. I think so. It's only ten feet from zombie B to skeleton to zombie C. Five, ten, uh -huh. fifteen. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I think that's 40 feet. Might even be able to get down to skeleton D after that. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. No, it doesn't, won't get to skeleton. Yeah, I think it can only get three at a, oh. Yeah. yeah. You, you that, got four, though. That, like Thank that. you. Sorry, Rob. Thank you. Yay. That's it. Okay. So okay. Strength saving throw again. First, starting uh, with zombie B. Okay. So it's 3d8. Okay. Yeah. So zombie four. B failed. Okay. It's only four damage. Okay. Total? Yeah. Okay. And then zombie C. Failed. Skeleton A passed, so he takes two. And skeleton C failed. And then I'm also going to move on it. Okay. Two. Three. Okay. Okay. Done. Zombie A is going to uh, lope over to you and do a slam attack. But he misses with a five to hit. A zombie B is going to move out of the wind wall. And he's going to try to climb over. But he can't. He goes right into the wind wall. And he takes damage, four damage. That's uh, B. And C. He can't make it over the wall. Okay. Now it's skeletons again. So skeleton A is going to go up here and try to climb over the wall. 
and he manages skeleton B. Where is B there? He's gonna try to climb over the wall. He can't. And C. He's gonna try to climb over the wall. And he manages. Wait a minute, what's going on? Okay, there we go. And D. Walks into the wind wall and he takes four damage. And E. And he's going to shoot an arrow at you. And he misses. Okay, that's the it, it for Skeleton's turns. Musette's turn again. Um, okay, I'd like to use my Wand of Wonder, but I have a, sorry, I have a, an actual, like, just question question. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> it says it's the D100, which is yeah. the this one, right? Sorry, I don't know if you can see it. It's uh, mm -hmm. you take the there's the two ten sided dice and you roll them together. So one of them is the tens and the other is the ones. That's... Well, you have to say what you're pointing it at first before you roll. Okay. So I'm gonna point it at skeleton <clears throat> A. Okay. Um, mostly because it also says that uh, uh, the range is a little bit bigger. Okay, so 57. Okay. Please don't make something garbage. Okay, uh, I cast darkness. Okay. Yeah, so it's gonna, it, okay. yeah. So that way it'll affect, yeah, these people in here. Yeah, and so you're um, also in, in darkness right now. Is that a concentration spell? Uh, <laughs> no. Because it was just yes. from body. It is? But the spell itself is concentration. Yeah, up to 10 Okay. Minutes. Yeah, and it says if you point it at a creature or object, it moves with them. So it'll be centered on that skeleton. Oh, so skeleton, it's going to it's gonna move with skeleton A as long as you're concentrating mm -hmm. on it. So he'll have okay, disadvantage if he tries to, like, shoot arrows or anything. And anybody that's inside of that. Yeah, the the um, the Baldur's Gate three game is really unforgiving about darkness. Like you try to throw a a bomb inside of a circle of darkness, it's like nope, you can't see in there, and you just can't do it. Hmm. Okay. Um. So is my my uh, turn is over because you said that that mm -hmm. was my action. Um. I think the Wand of Wonder is an action, but you have bonus actions and movement still. I just moved, and uh, my bonus okay. actions, I can't, really don't have anything, so I guess okay. I'm done. Okay. Zombie A is in the darkness, and he, I mean, they don't really know which direction, how far the, zomb the, the darkness would go. So I'm going to say they are going to pick a random direction to run. He's going to run north. And he bumps into the wall right here, and he's kind of <laughs> stuck. Okay. And... This zombie right here is in the darkness. He can kind of see he's right on the edge, so I think he can tell that he's, he's going to go this way. There. Zombie C is going to go a random direction. He's going to go to the west. And he's going to follow. Now he sees you. He's going to follow you in here. But he's using his bonus action to. He climbed it, finally got over the wall. And then he's like, I can't see anything because there's just darkness over there. So he doesn't know what to do. He's going to go here. And so A. He's trying to get out of the darkness, but he doesn't know that he can't because it's centered on him. He's going to try to go south, and he can't go south because of the wall. So he's going to try to climb over the wall, and he manages to climb over the wall. Yeah. And... There. 
and he's going to fire an arrow with disadvantage, and he misses. Okay, Skeleton B is going to climb over the wall. Okay. Yep, he's able to do it. And he gets to here. And his action was climbing over the wall. And C is going to rush at you because now he can see you. And he's going to attack. This one's really beat up, by the way. And he misses with his short sword. He swings his short sword at you, but he misses. And this guy is going to try to climb over the wall. He's able to climb over the wall. And he goes up here. And this guy goes up here and tries to climb over the wall. And he can't. Okay. Now it's Musette's turn again. Oh, I'll use the longsword. It only has a five foot reach. So longsword at skeleton C. Okay. Rolled hit. Okay. It is 17. 17. That hits. And then the damage is 1d8 plus yeah. 3. 6. Okay, yeah, you um, you cut right through his spinal cord, and he kind of his top half just spins in the air and falls down on the ground, and he is <laughs> double dead. Just the one over. Okay, done. And now it's the, oh, you moved out of the zombies turn a space, so he gets to do an opportunity attack, and he hits. Ah. That was Zombie C. He does four points of damage. He he punches you. Bam. Okay. In the shoulder. Ouch. Okay. And now the zombies get to it. Uh, get to go. So Zombie A is going to come at you. And make an attack. Uh, so that's a twenty to hit, and that hits, and it claws at you for seven damage. Whack. Rakes you right across the across your uh, arms. Ow. And B. Plenty. It's getting closer. And C goes back over here to attack you again. Wow. Also hits uh, for four more damage. Yikes. And D can only go half speed. There. Okay. You're starting to get surrounded. Now it's the skeleton's turn again. So skeleton A is still in darkness. He doesn't know what to do. Oh, and actually, um, every time you get hit, you're supposed to be making a constitution saving throw uh, to hold up your um, con concentration on the darkness spell. Oh. So, um, so, Rob, I think she just has to beat a 10, right? Because she just took like four and I think two or something damage. Yeah, so anything. Ten or higher. So constitution saving throw, you have to beat a ten. Two times. Ugh. Okay, I got three. Three total? Yeah, and then I just got ten. Okay. You said and two what, times, right? D yeah, you don't have any constitution, any bonus for your constitution saving throws? It's plus one. Oh, okay. All right, so the, the <laughs> darkness drops. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this skeleton starts, uh, shoots an arrow at you. And he misses. And this skeleton runs over here and takes a swing at you. 
and he hits seven damage. And this one's coming over here also to take a swing at you. He misses. Skeleton E is going to try to climb over the wall again. He can't do it. Now it's Musette's turn again. Okay, I'm going to um, Misty Step out of there. Okay. Yeah, and that does not promote, provoke attacks of opportunity. You can... Okay, cool. One, two... underway first. Three, What's that? Four, five, oh. six. <laughs> Rob's a... Uh... You 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 hear a, a mystical voice saying that you should use Thunder Wave first. Oh, <laughs> shoot! Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if you want, to. I keep on looking at it and I keep on thinking, oh, but it's only 15 feet within, you know, my radius or whatever. Yeah, but you're okay, surrounded so by enemies. Yeah, if you want to do that, now I am. It's just yeah. I'm never surrounded. <laughs> yeah. Right, or your friends are always in the way. Yeah. Okay, uh, so Thunder Wave. Yeah. What's the saving throw for that? Constitution 15. Uh, 2d8 Thunder Damage. That's gonna Depending on what level you're casting it at. That's, that's gonna hit eight guys. Oh, so you could upcast it for even more damage. Yeah, if you cast it at level 5, it's 68. Oh, yeah, that would be better. I cast it at one. Wait, second? Yeah, I was going to cast it at second. Okay, third, all of mine are done. Okay, it's my one five slot. 68. Yeah. Okay. A voice from the, a voice from the, the, or from the tree whispers to you to cast Thunder Wave. So Zombie A passed. I think, do they take half damage when they pass? Uh, uh yes. Half okay. damage, and they don't move. Okay. Zombie E passed. Skeleton D passed. <laughs> Skeleton B failed. So what? what is the damage for the Thunder Wave? Okay, so it's six of these. Seven. Six, eight is fifteen. Plus... Eight is twenty-three. Four is twenty-seven. Plus five is six is thirty-three. And the last one is six. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine, wow. Okay. Geesh. So half of thirty-nine would be so we round down as nineteen. So zombie A, even though he passed, he's dead. Because he had exactly 19 hit points. Uh, zombie E passed. He's barely hanging on. Uh, skeleton D passed. And Skeleton B failed, so he's dead. Okay, now I gotta move on to Skeleton C. He's dead. Zombie D is dead. Because he only had three hit points. Zombie B is dead because he only had 14 hit points. So even if he, whether he passed or failed, it doesn't matter. Okay. Hey, thanks, voice from the sky. I'm still going <laughs> to yeah. step out of here. <laughs> we'll do that. There we go. Yeah, that was a good turn. And now it is the zombies' turns. So zombie B is going to start heading towards me. No way. He had to. <clears throat> Zombie B had to um, dash, so he doesn't have an action for attacking. Uh, yeah, so it's then Zombie E. Goes there. Sorry, the dog is crying because Joe went outside and she can't oh. see him now. Oh, I can't hear the dog. Oh, okay. So Skeleton A is going to take a swipe at you. 14 to hit. That's a miss. 15, 20. He's going to shoot an arrow. That's a miss. And D. Oops. That's not D. 5, 10, 15, 20. 
10, 15, 20. He can't really shoot at you because he's gonna, he might shoot this zombie. So he's gonna keep running forward. Fifteen twenty, right there. Okay. All right, Musette's turn again. Okay, so I'm gonna. Get a little bit further away. It'd be really nice if I could turn around. Oh, there it is. Yay, I found it. Okay. So, let's see. Yes, I will stick a cloud of daggers on Zombie E. Okay. That should also affect Zombie B, right? Yeah, you, you don't have to put it right in the middle of the square. It can be like... It can be in between. Yeah, let's do in between the uh, zombie e. e and zombie B. Okay. Um, okay. I'm gonna cast it from oh, from fourth level you get eight uh, d four damage. Okay, go ahead and roll the damage. Four. Okay. One. Two is three. Three is six. Two is eight. Two is ten. One is eleven. It's twelve. And three is fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, yeah, that killed both of them. They are ground up into little chunks. Skeleton A is going to run up and take a swing at you, and he misses, and D is going to also run up and take a swing at you, and also misses, and E is going to run halfway and then shoot an arrow, and he got a critical hit. <laughs> He shot it ah! right in, in right into your the into your clavicle in between your your neck and your shoulder blade. Uh oh. Uh, so that is uh, eight damage. Jeez Louise. And now it's your turn again. Can I do healing word on myself? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. And that's a bonus action, so you still have actions when you do that. Yeah. So, first of all, I'm going to back up out of here. Okay, you'll take uh, two attacks of opportunity. Ah, flip-flop. Uh, miss and hit. Okay, so what's the damage? So, you take uh, eight more damage from the attack of opportunity. Ah! From Skeleton D. Hits you with his sword as you run out away from him. Okay, well, I'm gonna do healing word on myself. Okay. At fourth level, so it's a 4d4 plus three. Okay. Seven plus three is 10. So I get back 10. Okay. Oof, not great. I will shoot skeleton A. Seven plus seven is 14. Does that hit? Uh, it does, yeah. Okay. 14 to hit, and then it's 2d6 plus 3. Mm -hmm. Bitch, where are you? There it is. 5 plus 3 is 8 plus 3 is 11. 11 total. Okay, yeah. The the skeleton A is dead. Okay. Skeleton D moves up here and attacks you, and Skeleton E moves over there and fires an arrow. So, miss. That's a natural one. He drops his sword on the ground. 17 to 17 hit? 
Yes. Okay. Four seven damage. You get take another arrow. Seven. Okay. And Skeleton D dropped his sword on the ground. And it's your turn. I have a question. Mm-hmm. I had this note about actions in combat. I can use two weapons, so if I use two daggers, it's just... Yeah. You, you do the roll to hit twice and the damage twice for each one, or...? Yeah. Well, no, yeah, so it's like you, you just roll, um, roll to hit for each one. Okay. The uh, second so hand, uh, the second hand, like your off hand, doesn't doesn't add your um, doesn't add your proficiency bonus to it. So the to hit bonus is lower than than on the first one. Um. Okay. Okay. I guess I'll just stab. And I think that's that's the bonus sword. action. Is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, stab skeleton D with the longsword. So between the two of them, Skeleton D is the one that's hurt really bad, and the other one hasn't really been, uh, E hasn't been hit at all. Okay. Try to stab Skeleton D. Okay. Oh. I just have a 12. 12 to hit, I don't think. Does that hit? No. No. Okay. Okay. So, uh. And I still want to switch. Sorry. You I'm still want to do, okay. Well, he can't do an attack of opportunity because he dropped his sword. So, oh, okay. yeah, you you can get out of there. You can. Are you going to move farther? Oh yeah, I mean if I can. But they both not. have they go. both have bows. Okay. So they are both going to shoot at you with their bows for their turn. One is a hit, and the other is a hit. This might be the end for five damage for one of them, and oh. eight damage for the other. I'm dead. Yeah. You could try cutting words. Cutting words? Oh, for the first one? Mm-hmm. Oh wait, are they immune to being charmed? Is there uh, skeletons? No, I guess okay. not. Doesn't yeah, I are. figured that it wouldn't work if they okay. were skeletons. Okay, Musette was unable to confront her uh, her grief that she's been avoiding. Violence doesn't solve everything. As uh, Anastasia and uh, is casting the spell. Does anybody else want to um, make the help help out with the with the spell? You know, you can. So you can do persuasion. You can do um, you can do religion. You can do whatever skills you have. Just explain how it's going to. You want to help with it to make the make the the difficulty less difficult. That would be Richard and and uh, Ralph. Oh. <sighs> okay, well, let's see here. Put my throat's in my Okay, so a persuasion, you said? Yeah. We, well, whichever you, whatever you want to use. You tell me what you're going to do. Well, let me see real quick. The ones that have dots in them are the ones that you actually have um, have skills in. The the, uh, was I ever supposed to do a long rest or anything like that since I was woke up in the hospital? Yes. Well, I'm going to try to persuade uh, Musette. Okay. Um, so I, uh, you know, I crouch down next to Musette and I'm like, look, same thing I said before. <laughs> uh, don't know you that well, but I'm glad to be a part of your team and we definitely need you. You're a beast out there in the field. And you drive motorcycles pretty good, so please come back to us. And then I roll an eleven. Okay. okay. Yeah, that <clears throat> that's that doesn't cut it. Okay. And um, so Zoe, Zoe. So Ralph can uh, 
do a, can try to persuade as well. Okay. To uh, miss me yeah. set. Okay. And what does Ralph say? <clears throat> uh, Jericho squad needs you. And sometimes I feel like you're the only voice of reason. But also, I'm crazy. So you might be crazy too. But we can't go forward without you. And most of the time, you're the one that keeps us alive. Plus three, so I got it. So I rolled an 18. 18. Okay. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, yeah. So you brought the you brought the DC down to nineteen. Yeah. If anybody else has any other skills that are better than persuasion, you can try to use those. You just have to explain how you're using them. Hmm. Well, I got plus seven in in athletics. I just don't know how I could use that. Yeah, I I don't see how that. Yeah. I have uh, um, I have my pack boon talisman. But it's okay. for an ability. It, but um, when aware of your talisman fails an ability check, they can add D4 to roll, potentially turning the roll into a success. This benefits can be this benefit can be used four times, and but all expenses are restored when you finish a long rest. And I have four available uses. Can I can I use this on my persuasion towards Muset? You already succeeded. So you would be trying to su succeed more. Yes. But you 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 can't. I mean, you already succeeded. I don't know how that you could do more. There's nothing wrong with succeeding more than <laughs> yeah. success. Okay. So your persuasion <laughs> attempt lowered the DC. Yeah. Yeah. Is what it is. So if I use my pack boon and roll. A D four four times. Um, I mean, I could just lower the DC more and more. No, you you lowered the DC to nineteen. And actually, Zoe's really good at this, so she would have to roll a natural one to fail. It looks like I just did the math on it. But if you, if Musette had survived against the zombies, she would have been able to roll with advantage. Hmm. Okay, so go ahead and and uh, do your resurrection. Okay, am I am I needing to roll? Yeah, roll twenty sided die and add twenty one to the number. You're not gonna believe this. What? A one. Okay, yeah, that's a failure. I think so, he cheats me, Ralph. I'm sorry. <laughs> So yeah, because I woke up in the hospital, I don't, I, I, I don't click a long rest. You do, dungeon master. Yeah, I yeah, do. you, oh. you get a long rest. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, me, and so with your staff of resurrection, does it say you you can only use it once per day? I believe so. Let me get back on that screen here. Yeah, you can't cast it again until you complete another long rest. Right, yeah. So, so Musette stays in the land of the dead. Uh, you guys, you can um, take, everybody can take a long rest and try again the next day. Okay. Does this Musette hospital will... have a gift shop? <laughs> it does not. You're, you're actually still in Jericho headquarters in London. It's not really okay. a hospital. Gotcha. I don't know where I'm at. Yeah. So a little foggy. Am I able to... I have Vampiric Touch, and it's supposed to siphon mm -hmm. uh, other people's uh, uh, health hit points when I'm low. Yeah. Uh, is there a way I... Uh, can I do this to... Can I reverse it and give some of my life force to Maset? No, uh-uh. Is there anything anybody else wants to do uh, for the day before you guys all um, uh, go to sleep and, and try again the next day? You'll be able to have two people next time. What else I could do? 
because I'm kind of wiped out from trying to use the rod. Mm hmm. And from being dead. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> it takes, takes a lot out of you. Yeah. Take this opportunity to just heal up a little bit more and try again tomorrow. Yeah. Do you guys want to take a break and then come back? Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Over 50% of the proceeds go to the Texas Children's Cancer Center, where artist Don Bertram volunteers monthly. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues to be inspired by his art. He uses that inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center, and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue to work with him. There's a news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.clivebarkercast.com to find links to the video and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe, and Ralph by Asia Yordanova. She also created the Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. Jonathan Livingston Seagull artwork by Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. Map of the Reconciled Dominions and Isorderex by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition Cradle of Jersemet provided by friend of the show Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. Bentley Widget here, smashing through the fourth wall like the freaking Kool-Aid man to tell you about our friends at Little Spark Films. Imagine you're sitting around the table eating waffles with your friends and they're all talking about this crazy new film they saw on Amazon Prime or Tubi or Plex. So you're like, yeah, it was totally scary. But you haven't seen it and they can see right through you because you're maybe made out of glass like the Kool-Aid man. Don't be that guy. Go see The Torturer right now. Pause this thing, watch it, and come back. Support Joe and Catalina. Oops, I mean Ralph and Musette. Also, while you're supporting them, you might want to see their Hellbound Laments, short films featuring boxes from the Pyramid Gallery and configuration boxes. You should also check out Catalina's Barker and Briefs, where she reads Clive Barker books. Eureka! Eureka! Have you ever wanted to visit Fairbanks, Alaska? Catch the Northern Lights, visit Denali National Park, Chena Hot Springs, or any of Alaska's other scenic destinations? Come stay in our Eureka Airbnb. Use the code BarkerCast and we'll take 10% off your stay. Make sure there are cool Clive Barker decorations, books, and movies. Maybe you can even join us as we record an episode. Another great way to support the Barker cast is go to our Tee Public store and get one of our t-shirts. We've got Jose's Baphomet design, Jericho Squad, uh, Cenobium designs by Nina and Ed Martinez, Marcus's Pinhead design, and our old legacy shirts. Just go to www.teepublic.com slash stores slash BarkerCast. Okay, so um, we're back. Uh, everybody get got a long rest, so you get your spell slots back and whatnot. Um, and who's going to... Uh, I'm assuming you're going to be resurrecting again. Um, who's going to Who's going to resurrect whom this time around? So can Laura, can Anastasia, can Anastasia and I each take a turn, or is it still yeah. one yep. per day with the ashes? No, you, 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 uh, it's one per day with the ashes, but you each can do it. So now you can do two times for, for today. Hmm. Because hers is totally separate. It's not related to the ashes or the, you know, or the, uh, Father Rawlings. Okay. So, uh, who wants to go first? 
I say we just try to get Musette back up. We had her so close. Yeah, let me just go ahead and do Musette, and, and then you can do the ashes for Tertibir. Okay. Yeah, let's do it like that. So you want me to go ahead and roll my 20? Yeah. Okay. Anything but a 1! Yeah. 11! Okay, yeah. So Musette is back. <laughs> okay, Musette, you're back from the land of de the dead. You're feeling uh, groggy, and um, and uh, you're feeling like you have some unresolved issues with grief. Uh, so how do I get out of this death saves? Um. Oh, yeah. You just you just uh, heal, I think, and then do long rest. So now I gotta. Yeah. Take a spoonful of uh, of yep. uh, ashes. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. And so before you cast that spell, we'll go uh, go to Chertovir. So Chertovir, uh, you're back on the battlefield. You see your friends frozen in mid battle, looking determined but afraid, uh, as they battle Emmet. Uh, and Drovo is by your side. He reaches out to you and he says. Brother, our ancestors in the First Dominion are calling us home. Finally, we can see it for ourselves, and he reaches out to you. Do you take his hand? Okay. You you start walking across the Dominions, and you're, okay. the, the steps that you take don't match the pace that you, you know, as you're walking. You're walking across the Dominions at this fast pace. You cross the mountains of the Jokalelau. You, you uh, follow the Lenten Way. You cross over the boundaries between Dominions. Uh, yeah. You're getting closer and closer. Um, you start to cross over, um, as you, and as you get uh, near Darthur City, and you start to see uh, into the First Dominion. Make a perception check. All right, perception check. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Six plus six, twelve points. Okay. So yeah, with the twelve, you can kind of see off in the distance what looks like. It looks like an impossible uh, juxtaposition of fleas and mountains. Wow. So, you yeah, you see sort of buzzing around um, this this massive shape uh, off in the distance across the oceans of the of the first dominion. Gotcha. Um, but before you can go any further, uh, a, a a big chain of spider web. Uh, gets in between you and Drovo and Drovo doesn't notice he continues on and you're and uh, and you're caught in the web okay um so I guess I could try looking out to my brother and see if he can find out that I'm stuck he 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 kind of uh, disappears off into the distance okay and I struggle uh, I struggle on the uh, the spider and chains you see uh, Gaustus, Megara, and Willem uh, appear. Oh. I, I have a look of resignation on my face. Gaustus says, Where is the man you promised us? Where is Cassius Briar? I I delivered him to you. How? Uh, what did you do with him? How did he... Uh, is he not with you anymore? He is not. Well, how did that happen? You tell me. So it seems that he was back in the Imagica, and I honestly don't know how he did that. Um, I think I took care of him again. Um, I did not have the scroll with me to do the spell, so I could not send him back to hell, but I assumed you guys take souls, correct? So... When I when we destroyed Cassius, did you not get his soul back in hell? We needed his body. Oh. Where um, is his body now? Probably in the same place that he's fallen in. Um Yeah, so let me let me see if I can remember what happened to Cassius. So we fought and we killed him. And we looted his body, and we left his body 
on Darther City. Darther City, right? In the yeah. garden thing. Yes. Um, I think he remains, his remains are at Darther City. As you're talking, the, the background around you changes. Mm -hmm. You're standing on a sort of a craggy mountain and there's a river of lava below you. Oh. He says, we never really had the chance to exact our revenge on Cassius. It's debatable whether our, our contract was fulfilled. Well, Gaustus, I mean, I, I, I supplied you with the soul and the body that I promised you. What you did with it afterwards is your own discretion. I mean, I know that I've had, in the meantime, we've had to fight Cassius again. He's infiltrated people uh, that were close to us in, in our order, and uh, he's responsible for people dying and for people being captured. So, you know, I mean, we right now I'm not exactly sure where I am, but... I promise you if I if I get out of this cloudy location that I'm in, I will do everything I can to supply you with Cassius again and make sure that you uh, exact your revenge for what he's done to you and uh, your arm and uh, those close to you. I propose another bargain. We could debate on whether you fulfilled your contract in the infernal courts here in the gulfs, uh, but it would take decades. So I, pr I propose that we end that contract and we start a new one. In this new contract, you bring, you bring me back Cassius's body. And you will be my champion. You will represent the gulfs in in your war against the usurper god Hepexamendios. Uh, you're, there will be no collateral of your soul. This is more important than that. And do you accept our terms? What do I stand to gain? We will give you powers as your um, patrons. Now, I don't want to have any spiders following me around, and I don't want to grow bug eyes again either. We can avoid the bug eyes, and we don't have to follow you. Okay. Um, I, I still do consider that I did fulfill my contract with you. I did deliver, I did deliver Cassius to you. And However, you made no attempt to contact us when you knew that he had escaped. Yeah, so I hope you will forgive me for not wanting to disturb you and not wanting to go back to a situation that I thought we had closed any business that I had with the gulfs. So can you assist me in leaving this place? If you accept our bargain, I can. Okay. I think I am willing to... Uh, to strike that bargain with you if it will help me go back to the Imagica and back to my friends um, uh, make a perception check sure okay 7 plus 6 13 okay you start to hear a kind of a whiny voice uh, coming from way off to the west across the across that river the river of lava there mm-hmm it's, he's, it's saying, just ahead. I know it's him. You have to kill him You or take him as a pet. Uh, make an intelligence check. See if you recognize him. Intelligence check? Yeah. It seems really familiar, but you're not sure who that is. And mm. uh, right now, Gaustus and Megara says, do you know someone else uh, in the gulfs besides us? I think... I remember someone who I may have a portion of them on my person. Once I I fought an imp in the folly in Africa and the Fifth Dominion, and I do remember a small imp of a demon, uh, which was really, really annoying. Hmm. I see. 
Uh, was that Nisqually Flume? That does sound familiar. He's uh, he's pacted to a, a, a vile creature called Dominus Wretch, and they're both headed this way. Mm. I don't let them talk to you. Don't let them get close to you. I recommend attacking them as soon as they get within range. Uh, this is going oh. to be a test of our new champion. Okay, well, am I not under your protection, Gaustus? Uh, you're under my protection, but I want to see how you do first. Okay. And they turn invisible. All right, so, um... So what's my situation here in terms of spells and stuff? So do I heal? Yeah, you can go ahead and do a full rest. A full rest? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have taken a full rest. And can I go ahead and cast... Um, can I go ahead and cast Mage Armor? Yeah. Okay. Casting Mage Armor. Yeah, that makes sense. You've got plenty of time for that. Uh, go ahead and roll for initiative. All right, rolling for initiative. Come on. Woohoo! 14 plus 3, 17. All right. This one ended up also being, uh, ended up bigger than I was expecting. Looks pretty cool, though. In, in, like... the, pro in the program I use, it it's actually all also has motion. So, like, you can see the river flowing and stuff. What is this thing over here? What thing? This one that I'm marking. I don't you see it. No, because I think I'm it's just a statue. Oh, okay. It's the same as the one over here. Statue with a gargoyle on it. Yeah, it's seven squares below and three squares to the left. Yeah. Okay, it's a guardian. Okay, gotcha. Okay. That'd be cool if we could see the motion, but uh, yeah, yeah, I believe you. Yeah, roll twenty doesn't allow it. Otherwise, it would we would. Okay, so this this guy kind of lopes along 20, 25, 30, 30 40, and then he's going to dub dash, so he's going to use his action to double move. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 45, It's like 14 squares 35. away from me. Thirty-five, forty. He's facing backwards, I guess. Is there a path towards where I am? Because it looks like we're in a kind of a cliff thing. You're you're up high on a cliff, kind of, yeah. And then the then yeah. the, so and then down down towards the path is where they are. How would he get to where I am? Uh, he'd have to climb, I think. Okay, cool. And then uh, they they rolled high for initiative, so then the squally flume is next. Great. He got a nineteen. That little guy's so annoying. And he's back because he's in hell. Okay. Makes sense. And he doesn't like you. Hmm. Fifteen. Winnie. I've got a piece of his horn in my pocket. Okay, that's the end of their turns. Uh, it's Chertovir's turn. Okay. Um, you got kind of a steep ledge there that you could either climb down or if you can, if you're able to fly or you can just shoot stuff at them. I mean, yeah, I got the high ground. Why would I sacrifice having the high ground, right? Yeah. Okay, so, like, I see them down there, right? But I think I think they're pretty far from me, right? I mean, they're like, I, I don't even know About how many squares they're seventy feet away. away, it looks like, or right, seventy-five. Okay. Let me see if I can figure out what to what to send them at them. Um, can I? Hmm. I'm gonna cast Maximilian's Earthen Grasp. Okay. 
Do they need to be standing on Earth for that to work? It says you choose a five foot square unoccupied space on the ground that you can see within range. A medium hand made from compacted soil rides, rises up and reaches for one creature. So I guess we wouldn't be able to do that, right? Because yeah, it's they're on wood. Yeah, they're on a log. Okay. It's log, log. Okay, yeah. let's see what else we got. Um, how about I, I cast chromatic orb? I'll cast okay. Chromatic Orb at 5th level. To... I think that would hit both of them. I think so, too. Let's see. Uh, it says range 90 feet, so I could reach them. And then it says you hurl a 4-inch diameter sphere of energy. And, okay, let's see. Sorry, my camera is in front of the screen, so I can... And, and which kind of damage do you want to do to them? Okay, so... I want to do I, uh, acid damage, and okay. I want to hit uh, that first guy. He's he's holding an axe, I think. Yeah, he's not really holding an axe. That's just the figure. Yeah, he, okay, he looks yeah. like a really skinny-looking minotaur, but he's kind of loping along, and he looks he looks sort of desiccated and rotting when you look at cool. him. Cool. All right, so um, so I'm going to cast chromatic orb at fifth level. With okay. acid damage on him. So it's not... And I guess it doesn't hit multiple enemies. I thought it did. I guess not. It's a four-inch okay. sphere of energy, so it'll just yeah. hit him wherever. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and roll to hit. Okay. Uh, casting chromatic orb. Rolling to hit. 24. Yeah, that definitely hits. And now... Okay. Effect... It's telling me at fifth level it's supposed to be seven d eight. Yeah, wow. So Maybe. I'm gonna just I'm gonna click on that. Okay. Shouldn't have messed with the pro, dude. <laughs> oh my Thirty God. damage. Oh. <laughs> hey. Ouch. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm I'm a wizard. I gotta use these spells, dude. Yeah. Ah. Take that. Yeah. I lay my hands upon the. Wow. Actually, okay. No. Yeah. It so this blob of acid hits him, and it's like ah. Being dead is really annoying to me. Yeah. I point at uh, Plume, Flume, yeah. whatever his name is, and I say, "I'll deal with you next." And he says, "Get him! Kill him!" Okay. So, uh, yeah, Dominus Wretch is, uh, is, he's scorched really badly from the acid. And he's trying to figure out how he can get up the hill. He can't fly. He'll be running up that hill, I guess. Yeah. I didn't make a deal with God, but I made a deal yeah. with the devil. 30. 35, 40, 5, 10. Oh, he's climbing on the statue. Smart. Yeah. And he's going to make a, he can do a standing leap and he can uh, leap 20 feet up. So he leaps to here. And that's the rest of his turn. And so basically, he's just grenade jumped up there, huh? Yeah. All right. So he can fly 20 80 feet. feet. 5, 10, 20, 20, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. But, I, but there's also some vertical flying, too. So I'm going to say he made it to about here. Because, you know, he's not just flying straight across. He's also flying up. So he loses some of that distance because he's and he's out. flying into range of my attack. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like it. Okay, now it's your turn again. All right. Well, first a quick, a quick question. So, uh, Wretch, yeah, is is he kind of on a ledge below he is, me? Yeah. He, he's on a ledge about probably eight feet below you. Okay. 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 Okay, and he can jump 20 feet standing jump, yeah. right? Yep. 
Huh. Um, all right. Well, let's see. I'm going to direct my attack at uh, Bloom. Bloom. Okay. Uh, is it Bloom? Bloom with an F. Flume. Okay. I'm going to hit Flume. I'm going to cast at Flume. Uh, fourth level magic missile. Okay. Okay. You don't um, have to roll to hit with that. They just automatically hit. You just roll the damage. All right. Here we go. Says 1d4 plus 1. Yeah. Wait, is that right? At fourth level? Well, that's all I do? No, that's not right. Oh, I mean, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of second or higher, the spell creates one more dart for each slot level above first. Yeah, I'm so at the fourth. First, yeah, so the first level is one. So if you're casting it at fourth at level, fourth, it should be four, four, missiles. four missiles. Yeah. And then I roll to hit. If you look under two. notes, it says plus three, count plus three. And that tells you how many missiles you're going to have. Oh, oh I see. Okay, okay, okay. The original plus three. Okay, okay. So my first missile hit the two points. Is that right? Well, isn't it plus two? Each missile no, is one plus D4 one. Plus, plus one. Okay, one D4. Okay, so you got a one plus one is two. Yeah. Okay. So that was my first missile, right? It's so now two. I got to do that three more. Huh? Yeah. So okay. I got to do this three more times, right? Yep. Okay. Second missile. God damn it. Two. Okay. Uh, third missile. What? One plus one, two. Okay. Last one. Two plus one, three. So that was two, 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 three. So that was nine. Nine points. Wow. He's hurting really bad, but he is not down. Okay. Okay. Awesome. He leaps up. Boom. Ah, oh, great. Oh, can I can I perform Blade Song as my action? I think you, you cast magic missiles a, as your action. Okay, gotcha. I meant it. You mean as yeah. your bonus action? Yeah. Um yeah. Blade Song. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to cast, uh, I know, sorry, I said I wasn't doing anything, and now I'm like, I remember what Rob said, if you don't want to take that, I understand, but I would like to cast um, Blade Song. Okay. There we go. So I gain a plus three bonus to my AC, my walking speed increases by 10 feet, and I have advantage on acrobatics checks, and I get a plus three bonus to any constitution saving throw. Oh, that's good, because make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> Okay. Constitution. It smells really, really bad. Oh, I got th one plus two. That's three. And then I get uh, a plus three bonus. That's six. Yeah. You So um, take, uh, let's see, take four necrotic damage. So I just take four damage? Yeah. From okay. the, 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 it's rotting presence. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Okay, and uh, and now it's going to whip at you with its barbed tail. Right. It got a natural one, so it uh, he kind of yeah. slipped, and let's see. Oh, <laughs> critical failure. Yeah, he kind of slipped and started to fall down. Oh, he makes yes. He's sure-footed though, so he makes those kind uh, of uh, dexterity checks with advantage. Okay, okay. Uh, he he slipped and fell down the cliff. Nice. Oh my god. Okay, but he caught himself like way down here. And I love it. He took six points of bludgeoning damage for sliding down the cliff. Wow, that was a that was a bad turn for him. I pointed Flume again, like, knowingly, like, you and me, buddy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. All right. Um, that was its turn. And then uh, 
Nisqually, it's Nisqually Flume's turn. He flies up to you. Mm -hmm. And he's going to uh, bite you. 16 to hit. What's your armor class yeah. now with your mage armor? My armor class is 15, and mage armor gives me, let's see. It's a total of 21 right now. There it is. It, what? His, his armor plus class six. is... Plus two for mage armor and plus three more for... Um, What's well, 13? Wait, I don't think that's right. Because I, I think his... Uh, I think the 15 might have been put on there from the last time he did mage armor. No, my, my armor class is 15. His base is 13 plus three dexterity bonus is 13. Or I mean a 16. Okay. It's plus two um, bracers of defense makes it 15 plus three um, for his blade song. Right. Wow. And then plus 16, the mage 17, armor on 18. top of that? And then, yeah, the mage armor is plus two. Oh my and, gosh. Wait, so is that 20? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> 13 so plus mage two armor is gives mage me armor. Mage armor gives me uh, 13 plus my dexterity modifier. Okay, so 13 yeah, plus 3, so that's It 16. doesn't stack with other things. It doesn't stack with armor, right? Yeah. He doesn't have any. He's got an unarmored bonus from Bracers yeah. of Defense. Mm, right. Yes, I remember yeah. putting those. So is... if you've got a place to, to put a temporary armor class in, in there, you could put that. So it's 20? Let me Dang. write this down. Okay. Wow. Yeah, like I'll okay. tell you, Mage Armor says, uh, my Third. target, uh, my base, my target base plus AC becomes thirteen three. plus its dexterity modifier. Yeah. My dexterity is plus three. Three. Yeah. Then a Blade Song. Six. Let me check that. Blade Song That's also plus adds three. to it. Because you're swinging yeah, your three. you're swinging your your uh, sword around. Plus two. Yeah. That adds uh, defense. But he, he missed, obviously. He can't get through with all that. There's another plus three. It's 21. Yeah, so it should be 21 with the with everything added together. Okay. Well, he obviously he missed. Right. He okay. didn't have Blade Song. What did he throw at me? He, he tried to bite to, me. He, he tried to bite gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, now it's your turn. All right. Well, he's, uh, he's looking in bad shape from your magic missiles. He's really beat up. Right, right. So I got my blade song going, so I think I am going to strike at him with my blade. Okay. Let's see. Where's my... Oh. Ooh, hang on, hang on, hang on. What if I... Do I need to have... Yeah, I already got my sword out. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to attack him with my silken sword. Do I roll to hit? Uh, yeah. All right, come on, come on. I got a B, a 20, plus 9, 29 points. So that's a kind of a waste of a critical hit, because he has yeah. one hit point left. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Still. Yeah, yeah describe, well, uh, describe how you kill him with your silken sword. Okay, okay, okay. So do I have to roll for points? I mean, yeah. just... No, he uh, just no. has one hit point, so... Okay, so as I slash him, I reach into my pocket and take out the tip of his horn, and I <laughs> stick it in his eye. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. He falls down on the on the ground dead, and uh, he just kind of lays there. He doesn't turn into a pile of ash because he's on his native plane, so he's dead for good this time. That's right. <clears throat> All right, so that takes care of that. Yeah. And uh, do you anything else for your turn? Um, I, I I look over the edge of the cliff and I just point at the guy who's like hanging out to it. Yeah. And I'm like, it's coming. Okay. All right. Yep. And he uh, he does his standing leap again. And he right. jumps to here. And then he's going to use his action to try to scramble up the cliff. 
And he makes a strength check with advantage. And he makes it. So he's, he, he uh, climbs up here and stands next to you. All right. Well, I guess he's he's looking for uh, he's looking for uh, some uh, some reaction, and he's about to get it. So I'm going to uh, attack him with my silken sword as well. Okay. So let's roll to hit. Yeah. Okay, that's a six plus nine, fifteen to hit. That actually hits. His armor class isn't very good. Okay, rolling uh, 1d4 plus 4. And I got 4 plus 4, 8 points okay, of damage. He, he, he gets hurt. Okay. okay. Let's and see if uh, I can... he's, he's back again, so he's next to you, so you take another... Um, make another constitution saving throw. Okay, Constitution saving throw. I've got 8 plus 2, 10. Yeah, so you take another uh, three, 3 points of necrotic damage from the okay. rotting presence. 3 points of necrotic damage. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep doing my blade song. Okay. All right, so yeah, that that was from when he jumped up that damage that you took then. So make another constitution. Now it's his turn. Make another constitution saving throw. Oh wait. Yeah. Yeah, because that was for his turn before. Now this this is his turn now this time. Another constitution okay. saving throw. So let me just make sure I got this right. So with with my blade song, I have a modifier for my um. I have a modifier for my constitution saving. It gives me a plus three bonus to any constitution saving throw. So I'll roll for constitution yeah. plus two plus three, right? Yeah. So that's going to be nine plus two, 11 plus three, 14. Yeah. It's for concentration so, on it, maintaining a spell. So what does that mean? Oh, the blade song? Yeah. It's a plus three bonus on any con saving throw to make. To maintain your concentration. Oh, okay, on the okay, spell. okay. Okay, oh. so it's not uh, right. So it's not. Okay. It's not a plus cost, three. All constitution right. saving throws. So right now I got nine plus two eleven then. Okay, so so that's a fail. Okay. So, so you take four uh, four necrotic damage. Okay. Okay, and he is going to whip at you with his tail. Uh, eight to hit. That is a miss. Okay. Okay, and that's it. And now it's your turn again. All right, I'm going to roll to hit him again with my silken sword. Okay. And I get an 18 to hit. Yep, that hits him. I'm going to roll for slashing damage of six points. Okay. Yep, he's hurt really bad, but he's not down yet. You okay. slash him across his arms. Okay, and he's going to whip... Uh, well, first make another constitution saving throw. Oh my gosh, this guy just keeps offending me with his presence. Yeah. Okay. I've got six plus two, eight. Okay, yeah, that's a fail. How many points? So you take five necrotic damage from his rotting okay. presence. Okay. <clears throat> And he's going to swing at you. Mm -hmm. Natural one again. Jeez. Okay. Mm -hmm. With his tail, he misses. And he misses really badly. And kind of slips and falls prone on the ground. And it's your turn. He's lying on the ground in front of you. Okay. So I just take my hand to my mouth. Do a Numa. At third okay. level, and that's going to be uh, Numa at third level says on a hit, the target takes 1d10 force damage, additional d10 per spell level. It, it would so, be at disadvantage and a, a range attacks at, at point blank range 
and, and especially yeah. to somebody lying on the ground is at disadvantage. Okay, so I have to roll twice and take the lower one? Yeah. Let me roll tw- to hit. Uh, first roll comes up as a 26 to hit. Jeez, okay. I'm going to roll again. And this is now a 17. Yep, that hits. Okay. And now, so, 1d10 at third level. So it's going to be 3d10s. Mm-hmm. Okay, plus three. Get one. That's nine points for the first. Uh, second roll is four. Okay, he's dead. Th- Thirteen, and then another six points. Nineteen. Okay, yeah. Describe how you uh, how you kill this this. Uh, the numa hits his. The Numa hits his minotaur like head and it kind of just explodes into a million pieces. Okay. <laughs> and uh and and um they come out of uh they the the rest of them they come out of invisibility. And yeah. Gaustus boots his corpse off of the down over the um over the hill and down into the pit. Because he doesn't want to smell him anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I lean down and I pull the horn that I stuck in uh, Flume's uh, eye back and put it, wipe it on my cloak and put it back in my pocket. (laughs) Okay. And I turn to Gauss for good luck. He says, excellent work. Uh, That was much more strategic uh, than than the battle that, than your, uh, your, the battle that, that cost you your life. Yeah. Tell me about it. That's right. Well. uh, All right. So what's next? Well, I will. I will ease your passage back, uh, back into the mortal world. Thank you, Gaustus. I um, never thought I'd be dealing so much with the gulfs, but uh, you're all right. Well, uh, let's. Uh, good luck. I hope that you can defeat this uh, Hapexamendios. He's a threat to all of us. Thank you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic, Rob just put, by the way. Rob just put a smear, a big, huge smear of Splat. blood down the cliff. I yeah. know. Looks great. Yeah. All right. So we're back. Okay. Now, with all of that going, um, you guys can roll with advantage to bring him back. And, um, Ralph, you've got a plus 12. And uh, anybody else that wants to help can help out to lower the DC. Rolling a 20 second, right? Yeah, so first of all, so Richard and um, Musette and um, Anastasia can also help out by and lower the DC. Okay, so Ralph is rolling. Well, roll before you roll, you guys, are you guys going to help or not? I'm gonna are you all going to help or not? Yes, yeah. I'm going to help. Yes, okay. yes we're going to help. You, you right. got to do it before I'm, he does it. You can't do it after. I'm, oh, I'm okay, worn so, out, but I'll still try. Okay, okay. so they got to roll first. Yeah. Because <clears throat> okay. they're lowering your DC to make it easier for you. Okay. Okay, now, uh, one of my, um, one of the things that has a, the biggest bonus on me is religion, so, yeah. so should I roll that one? Yeah, you can use religion to help. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, describe how you want to do that. Uh, basically, I'll just kind of like reach into the etherverse and and try to like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're you're making the resurrection easier using yeah, your own okay. your so own I power got, of re- resurrection. I got a nineteen plus five. So that's twenty four. Okay, so that that definitely brings the brings it down by one. So you brought it down to nineteen. Okay, and. We're rolling uh, 20 sided, and then we're also doing uh, looking at our proficiencies. Okay. Is that what I just saw? Is that correct? Yeah, look at your proficiencies and see how you could help. You have a high charisma, so persuasion would probably be really helpful for. But I don't know. I'd I'd take a look. Uh, My highest is Arcana. Okay, yeah, you could use Arcana. Okay. Just to to make the spell work better. Plus nine. Okay. Okay. So I got a nineteen total. Okay, that so that brings it down to eighteen for Ralph. 
And, um, okay, and then Richard, how are you going to help? I'm going to try to persuade him okay. to come out of his death. All right, what do you say What do you say to Churdovir? I'm like, sure. I can't lose you, man. You're, you're my main homie over here. You've showed me so much. You welcomed me to your home and showed me your traditions. And I have nothing but respect for you. So, like, from the bottom of my heart, please come back to us, bro. Okay. All 14. right, roll for persuasion. 14. Okay, yeah. Uh, 14 does it. So that brings it down to 17, and you've got a plus 12, and you can roll with advantage. So go ahead, Ralph. Okay. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to roll now. Ralph is rolling. <laughs> Roll to 13 plus 12 is 25. Yeah. All right. So Cherduvir is back. I book, man. Yeah. You now will call me Cherduvir the Gray. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Cherduvir is fine. Right. Hey, guys. Glad to be here. All back. right. So, uh, Cherduvir, when you come back, you, um, you can take two levels. Uh, one of them has to be Warlock. You could also do two levels in Warlock. So okay. you're level 11. All right. So do you want me to share my screen real quick? Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. Chodavir. What's what's happening to Chodavir? He's, he, has a, he has an infernal patron now. Yeah. Uh, scroll down. Uh, either see that where it says add another class? Ah. And warlock. warlock. A wielder of magic that is derived from a bargain with an extra planar entity. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gostas. Ability score. When I reach 4th, 8th, 12th, 16th, 19th level, it can increase one ability score by 2. That's just telling you what happens when you okay. get to level 4 as a warlock. You're, you're level 1 as a warlock. I'm just going to add class. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, so now you're level 9 wizard and level 1 warlock. And you can pick level 10 wizard or you can pick level 2 warlock. Hmm. Hmm. Can I take a look at what spells warlocks have? Yeah. Well, how do I do that? Yeah, it's right there. Oh. Okay, let's see. I mean, are, is there a big difference between mm -hmm. the spells of a warlock and the spells of a wizard? Kind of, yeah. I mean, a lot of them. Cro a lot of them are the same. A lot of them cross over. Um, mm. Ooh, what is this? I think, I think oh. warlocks end up getting like blood magic and stuff that they can use. Yeah. Let's and, like, see if I can find spells on the fly. Yeah, if I could find something something healing for me because I don't have a healing thing. Yeah, warlocks don't. Uh, you want vampiric touch, but you can't get that yet. Okay. Okay. So there's nothing on level one that would be like yeah, a healing, healing is type. like for is mainly for um, gotcha gotcha clerics. Mind silver, sliver, sliver. Oh, this looks good. I like things that are pointy and uh, blady. Huh. That's like this a psychic attack. Yeah. Yeah. Into the mind, psychic damage. Okay. This looks interesting towards enemies. I don't know. Let's see. Something that would be a little more um, evocative of my uh, deal with the gulfs. Let's see. Is there concentration? Uh, next turn. Oh, this could be useful. Yeah, it would fit with your pack with yeah. your uh, blade a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna click with learn on this one. Yeah. So that's one Thank of you. your cantrips. Yep. That I can use as a level one warlock. And then, do I have to pick a spell? No. Uh, well, yeah, I'd scroll back up and see how many spells you get. I, I don't remember. Yep. Uh, so it says, known spells, one, true strike. No, well, hold, you just close this. Plus features. What do, you, what do you want me to do? So it it said, hey, hey, click on add spells. See, cantrips, you, one okay, of two. two. Known cantrips spells, you have two. two spells. Okay, let's see. What other cantrip can I get? Yeah. Oh. Hey. Oh. Is it? Oh, okay. 
Let's see what else we got. Eldritch Blast. I know Ralph keeps rolling this one, and it looks like it's really good, but Ralph already has this one. Yeah. Let's it, see. It, it, yeah, it, it's it, it's one of the best Warlock spells, but it would be kind of stepping on Ralph a little bit. Right, right, right. Ooh, My Eldritch poison. Blast is bigger than yours. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, extend your hand. Puff Noxious Gas. I don't have to point my hand towards them. I just got to point my back at them. Let's see. Press the digitation. Hmm. That's pretty useless. Armor of Agathus. That's a cool one. But that that attack, that hurts everybody else that's around you. So ah. that's why I never use it. I have to wait until yeah. I'm isolated. You got the arms of Hadar. That Comprehend too. languages could be interesting. You're into first level now. But he gets two. He gets two uh, first level spells. Yeah, you get those yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, hellish hmm. rebuke is a, is nice if you want to have some. If you want to have something that's a that's a reaction, right? If so when something hurts you, you do massive damage, fire damage to them. Ralph has hellish that rebuke. already. Though. One reaction. Yeah. Hey, but I, I want to learn this one for a first level spell. This looks good. Because yeah. I usually don't do a lot of bonus actions or reactions, so this would be yeah. an interesting way of like, you know. Okay, I'm learning this one as a first uh, first uh, spell, okay. and then what is uh, protection from evil and good? So Zoe has this one, right? No, Anastasia. I can't. I think so. I can't remember. Let's see, useless unseen servant. This could be interesting. <laughs> what? He just went useless. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, you got that one? No, I wasn't going to. <laughs> okay. I but I never use it. Oh, yeah, this one for sure. First level concentration spell. Yeah, Being so it just, it, just, it just stays pointed at them and, and just keeps on zapping them for concentration. Yeah. Energy. So you don't have to, you don't have to uh, hit them the second time. It automatically just stays on them. Okay, that's my second spell for Warlock. And now let's pick okay. another cantrip real quick. And another cantrip. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, this is pulling them towards me. No, I don't want that. This is the spell that goes like, get over here. Yeah, you could use your... Uh, your. Um... Now that we don't have, uh, uh, you know, the seagull, we could pr I could probably get this minor illusion one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, okay, that's no my second. Illusions. Yep, that's my second one. So okay. I've got two of those. Now I got one more level, right? Yeah. So you can either be a level ten wizard or a level two warlock. How about I become a level ten wizard? Okay. Okay. Confirm. And now let's go see. What do we got here? Uh, I would look at class features first, just to see what what you get at level ten. Uh, so, okay, so what do I do here? Scroll all the way down to the bottom. It says Song of Defense. What's that? Oh, 10th level blade singing feature. You can direct your magic to absorb damage while your blade song is active. When you take damage, you can use your reaction to extend one spell slot. Oh, this is good. Yeah, I'm taking this one. Can I take oh, this yeah. one? Oh, yeah. That's cool. So while your blade so song is up, then it absorbs your damage. Please. Okay, cool. So I don't have to do anything. This is just now yeah. part of my level. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so do I get to pick? To spells. Ah, yes. Where do I see if I get more? Uh, add spells. And cantrip yeah. support of five. Prepare spells to. I get one cantrip, and I can prepare one more spell. Yeah, I would look at the highest level spells down at the bottom. For the yeah, just to like this, yeah. Something on the list. Uh, animate objects. No arcane hand. Explosive force, man. Big speed. Big B's hand. It's. I think it's the same thing as arcane hand. They just gave it a different name. Cloud kill. Oh man. Huh. Okay. That's interesting. Conjure Elemental. Oh, man, I want to do this one. I want to learn this one. Okay. I know this is a concentration spell. Casting but... time is one minute, so you can't really do it in combat. Oh, I see. You have I would to have to, to do yeah, it ahead of time. 
Yeah, bring him with you. Oh, okay, okay. And how long does he get to stay? As long as I'm concentrated? Uh, one hour. Oh, cool, cool. Concentration, one hour. Fire elemental, awesome. Fire, fire, fire! Why does it have uh, sample creatures that start at one fourth CR and go all the way up to six? Why would he? Why would he want something that's one fourth when he can hi get something that's a sixth instead? I don't know. Hey, this one's pretty useful too. Creation. Yeah, I don't you can know pull wisps one. of shadow material from the shadow fell to create a non-living object of vegetable matter within range. Soft goods, rope, wood. I, c I could tie down people, I guess. Oh. Uh, let's see, what else? Enervation? Uh, train life from it. Oh. Oh, yeah. I was starting to become more of a necromancer. I'm going to take this one. And this is concentration up to a minute. So this is one of those that I need to uh, uh, prepare if I'm going to anticipate combat. No. Oh, and, and you, you. That's how long it so. lasts. Oh, okay. It takes one action to cast it, and then for a minute you can use keep concentrating and keep using it every round. For one and hand. you heal half of the hit points that you take away from. The... Yeah, so that looks good because I usually don't heal yeah. very well. So I'm going to learn this one, okay. and then do I have to prepare it? Yeah. And now I have to pick another cantrip, right? So let's see. How do I go to cantrips? Technically, as a wizard, you're supposed to be learning these things from a book somewhere. Right, right. But Is I would say splash? that you, since you're in headquarters, you could learn this from headquarters. Ooh, this one looks good. Let's see, chill touch, chill touch. Uh, I I, I try to pick this the cantrips that go up levels as you go up levels, so that they get more powerful. You know, the high yeah, up. like one yeah. D eight when you reach so yeah. yeah. Control flames. Oh, this would be good. Okay, because if someone throws flames in my direction, I could probably non no. Yes. Non magical flame. Okay, so it yeah. can't be so magical. If you see flame something that's, that's on fire, me. you can right. control that. Yeah. Okay, I'm learning this cantrip then. That okay. could be useful. Okay. All so, right. So now what do I do? Uh, and then you got to do your uh, manage hit points. All right. So, so you got to roll a d6 and roll a d8 and add those to your rolled hit points. Okay, I'm gonna roll those. Give me just a moment. I'm gonna roll those in. And uh, can I roll them in here? One d6 and one d8. Yeah. So if so, you get a two, roll it again. A one or a two. Really? Yeah. And I can roll like this? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, add the five to that. Keep the I five. Add five you to can't this? keep the two. What? Okay. Okay, so five. And now let's roll this one again. The eight, yeah. Keep getting twos. Uh, I got Is that a one? one? Yes. That's four times now you roll that. Okay. Stupid electronic dice. You should buy okay. dice. Yeah. Five and okay. eight, 13. Yeah, so add 13 to rolled hit points. Okay, so... Like this? No. You, oh. you add it to the total. What did uh. it say before? Well, it was 38 because 38, I think I was hurt. Okay, 38 S plus 13 is what? No, don't just put it up 13 times. Yeah. Uh, 51? Yeah. There you go. The and then hit apply. Okay. All right. And then that's it. They hit the, the little newspaper there to save. Anastasia, you can resurrect somebody if you want. There's Drovo and, and, um, and Bentley left. Am I able to, or is it the same day? Because oh I wait, you you resurrected day. Musette, right? So no, yeah. I guess you couldn't. But Jodavir can eat the ash. Yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to do that for my brother. Okay. But what about Bentley and our pancakes? <laughs> they they didn't come. They they're not dead. Um, I mean, I I think it makes sense. 
if I had to pick someone, that I would pick my brother, even though Bentley, okay. I also want him to come back. Yeah. But I mean, we could try. There's okay. more people now who can bring so, other people, right? Yeah, now I have to figure people. out what your, uh, what your modifier would be. All right, so yeah, uh, roll to resurrect. You don't need any help. Me? To, yeah, roll to resurrect. Well, I guess, R do you guys want to do anything on this day or do you want to wait until the next day? Or I guess you could do it right now. Yeah, because you didn't do it. Okay. Um, so I roll a 20-sided die? Yeah. You got Seven. Okay. It was 20. Yeah. Rolled... yeah. Yep, you bring, uh, you bring Drovo back. There we go. Mm -hmm. My brother. Yay. You did it. Yay. Is that Ed? He's just, he wakes up? Yeah, he's a little groggy. Okay, okay. Well, Muzak can do spells, can't she? Can't she do the ash too? She could, yeah. And she could bring Bentley back. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put my hand on Drobo's chest and say, Welcome back, brother, and leave behind any sadness you may bring. He says, Thank you. Um... Okay, so, huh, okay. Do I need to do anything? What, or what do I need to do? For well, so we need to figure out. Yeah, so go ahead and roll uh, to bring back Bentley. Okay. 15. Okay, yeah, Bentley is back up again. Yay! Hi, Bentley! I don't, what happened? We're <laughs> hungry! <laughs> I don't Welcome remember back, anything. My fuzzy friend. Yeah. I think next time we better have a better plan. I'm finding the urge to scratch under his chin saying, who's a good boy? So instead, I'm just going to put my hand on his shoulder and say, welcome back, Bentley. Thank you. So it's good to see you all back and up again. I thought we weren't going to make it. Do I remember what happened to me? Well, actually, you do remember because part of your, your pact. Okay. Uh, your pact forces you to. Okay. Yep. I, in any case, I had 17. Yeah. So. Yeah. You would have anyway. Yeah. But you do remember. So do, does any, do you guys, were you also in a place with fire and demons? I nah. ask. No. What are you talking Bentley about? Bentley says, I, I, I don't remember anything. Just me, huh? Okay. Yeah. You Drobo, Drobo says, I don't remember anything either. Um, were we dead? Yeah. Y'all were dead. Yep. We were definitely across the veil for a while. I and remember I, think... I, I fell off that creature and it it grabbed me and and ate me. It threw me in its mouth, and that's the last thing I remember. I I don't have I have good news and bad news. Um, the good news is we're all back, but the bad news is um, I was asking you guys if you remember what you saw because I I was back in what the Fifth Dominion people call hell. And Gaustus was there, and he wasn't happy that um, he wasn't happy that Cassius had escaped him. He blamed me for it. He said I had not fulfilled my my pact of giving it to him when we defeated Cassius uh, during the uh, the voting ceremony. And um, in order for me to come back, he he helped me come back, but I had to get into a pact with him. So now, I guess. Uh, I need to give him Cassius again. And Cassius, we left him behind in Durther City. So I guess I might have to go to Durther City. So I don't know if you guys want to join me for that. But I think I think I, I feel this need to go to Durther City to fulfill that pact with Gaustus. Um, and Ryan, if I could just like a quick word of um, try to understand what so the pact was he wanted Cassius, Cassius to go back to hell, and he that, wants me to be his champion. Yeah. So he does require me to give him Cassius again. 
Yeah, you have to do that, and you have to, you have to fight the uh, the heart of the Aboriginal. Okay, all right. As representing representing the gulfs. Right. Okay, that's what yeah. he means as his champion. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for explaining that. So, yeah. So I guess I'll have to go to Durther City and see if I can locate Cassius. And how do I give him to to uh, Gaustus, though? Can I just communicate with him and he'll show up? He didn't explain. So hopefully the the hopefully that'll just become apparent. Okay. All right. So. It looks like I have a personal quest, which is to go back to Durthor City and find a way to offer Cassius to Gaustus. That's that's my thing. I guess I'll have to ask Bentley if I can use the truck. And anybody wants to come along? I'll roll with you. All right. But after is you there... guys tied me up, or not you guys tied me up, after I was tied up by those guys and I gave all my weapons to Chertevere, and then he gave him back. One of the things was that I have to attune to Cassius Briar's old sword, so I don't know if I did that, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity now to make sure that I'm tuned. Okay. I think you did. I mean, it only takes about an hour, you know, okay. so you can do it on a short rest. Or... I just wanted to officially make sure that it was known because I was reading through um, my inventory here, and for Cassius Briar's sword, the wish thing the luck had one um the luck blade no it was the wish blade had one charge so that's expired but it is a yeah. luck blade and uh if it's just on my person i don't have to be wielding it you can call on its luck to re-roll one attack roll ability check or saving throw you dislike and you must use a second roll and it can't be used again until the next dawn so i can do potentially two saving throw re-rolls in a day yeah well and and also you guys whenever you get you know um inspiration i i've clicked it on your character sheet so everybody i think just about everybody has one you can use that for that same kind of thing but nobody ever uses them but if you have the little sunset there and the inspiration thing that means you have one i don't have um, any inspiration where's the inspiration on Next the character speed. sheet, up on the top, in the middle, kind of. It looks like a sunrise or something on there. I don't have one. Might be someone um, clicked it away. I'm no longer unconscious. Maybe they go away when you die. Oh! I clicked on it, and a little sun appeared. Oh, you so, what, what, you gave one to yourself? I guess. I, this is an empty box saying inspiration. I clicked on the box and I got yeah. a little sun in there. So I don't know what. Yeah. Am I supposed to not do that? Right. Yeah. I'm supposed to. Right. Just click it again and it'll go away. Uh... Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I've mentioned that before. You guys have inspiration you can use um, if you ever need it. And okay. also, you have bardic inspiration from, um, from Musette, it can give you bardic inspiration during fights okay. and stuff. Okay, so do I need to do that now? No. Oh, okay. I mean, like, in the middle of fights and stuff. You... Yeah, I know. I keep on forgetting to, to do that. So Can I, I mean... buy some health yeah. potions somewhere? Yeah. On this trip? It's a good idea. You need some health potskies. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. That was stupid when I was getting beat up by him, and I was like, wait, I don't have... Any potions? <laughs> and there's no time limit for my quest of giving Cassius to like Gaustus, right? He didn't specify anything. No, he didn't specify. I feel like, you know, if that body is just laying there in Darthur City and that's an omen or a token or a totem for some sort of power that we might not be the only people heading that way to recover it. So I feel like time is of the essence. I think that's a good, uh, if, that's uh, a good point, Matt. That's a good point. So let's hit the road. Jack. All right. Throw yeah. Jack. Um, so you're all pretty exhausted right now, um, but uh, Bentley says, "Well, whenever you're ready, we'll we'll set up, set up, set up to to head back to uh, headquarters. Headquarters. Yeah. All right. Let's set up the little transport and go headquarters and take a long okay. rest. Yeah. I want them potions. Yeah. 
Yeah, so are you asking who are you asking for potions from? I'm just asking if um uh, if there's some sort of potions in London that I can buy that would work um, over in the other dominions, or if I need to wait till we teleport over there because of the magic qualities that they might have, uh, if, I'm not sure. If you want to ask Rank and Billy if they can give you some, make you can make a persuasion check. Maybe they'll give you some. Can I intimidate them? <laughs> you you can try that too. Yeah, make you make an intimidation check instead if you want. What do you what do you say to intimidate? I, I think I would rather do the uh, the persuasion. Okay. Uh, they kind of saved our butts back there and prevented yeah. us all from actually eating crap. So I would rather persuade them than get rough with them. Okay. And they're level twenty. And I pretty much explained that to them. I'm like, look, when we got out there, just total noob mistake. Didn't even think to grab potions. If you guys have any like that you could spare to just jumpstart us until I get somewhere I can get a horde of them or learn how to make them, I would really appreciate it, guys. Make a persuasion check. 21. Okay. Yeah. They say, you know, I think that's a good idea. And they give each one of you a, a greater, a greater potion of greater healing. Thank you. Okay. okay. So we, we all get one because yeah. I've got one. Okay. So now you have two. Okay. And they say, and also, you know, when there's big fights, don't forget to call on uh, friends. We're all here to help. Thank you. Uh, call on your allies. I think you've made some allies along the way. We're very honored. And and uh, Ralph, actually, you have a, a patron that when he gave you that tentacle whip, he said, if you ever call on him to come and get that tentacle whip back, he'll come and help you out in a Baphomet will come and help you out in a fight. Yeah. I haven't really figured out how any of that works yet. So, yep, with that being said, you all uh, head back in exhausted and um, get ready to, to make the journey to Darthur City next time. All right. Okay. And we'll sure. stop there. Okay, so we do a long rest? Yeah. All right, cool taking long rest to reset my HP and wow this was uh this was interesting to see what was uh on the other side to see what <laughs> uh, what each of us had to go through and overcome to come yeah. back from beyond the veil <laughs> yeah like what you guys created the maps yeah. and everything was really good <laughs> they were really good mm -hmm. And it was a lot more challenging to not have uh, our backup friends <laughs> oh yeah especially since I didn't make yeah. it through. Guess we'll just that later. Yeah. Anastasia, Anastasia had a choice in. to have backup friends and she said no. Didn't need them. And I got I got to uh beat back Nesquali Flume again. Yeah. Which Yay! was uh, which was fun. Yeah. It was fun. I knew that thing was gonna come in handy. Hey buddy. You okay? All right. Well thank you very all much. Right. All right. Well I'll see you guys all next time. All right, good game, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thank Thanksgiving. you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.